Hello and welcome to the Recursive Podcast. Next, we have a female entrepreneur who is passionate about business change, automation, and circular economy. Adina Huma is the co-founder of a Bucharest-based platform that offers sustainable packaging solutions for e-commerce players called Recreate. Adina and her co-founder Linda Vasilescu aim to help online retailers reduce waste, lower costs, and attract customers with green policy. She is also a seasoned consultant and a project manager. Guided the digital information and business growth of many businesses. Adina, welcome to the Recursive Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honest, uh, honored and uh, joyful to be here. <laughs> it's an uh, interesting morning that we're experiencing today. Uh, thank you for your patience. And it's always great to have uh, someone with an empathy that sits uh, opposite myself uh, when talking on the Recursive Podcast. Uh, let's let's start from from the very beginning. You you're coming from a, a small town in Romania, and um, went all the way through consultancy to entrepreneurship. Would you briefly guide us through your journey up until this point, please? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I never thought about. I mean, of course, uh, for many of us, you know, life happens. Uh, it's a sum of um, somewhere, sometimes mistakes, sometimes just uh, faith. Uh, coming through. Um, when I was uh, small, I envisioned myself to be a journalist, actually. Uh, and I was even running like a podcast, whatever was that uh, back in 2000, let's put it this way. Um, so um, from there, I, I went to a school, which I thought it's like the greatest school in Romania, only because it has like a very low entrancy uh, rate. Um, then, then I thought again, but I was there already, <laughs> so I couldn't change so much. Um, and then, um, um, you know, you're simply going through whatever to the next line that you actually see in your in your eyes. So um, I went through uh, education of social science. Um, so maybe I thought I'm gonna be, I don't know. A, administrative uh, function uh, in uh, European uh, structure or something. Um, but then I went to, to a, a, a training uh, internship into a big four. And then I discovered this um, professional, uh, professional um, services. And it was a different world. I haven't been prepared for that of, at all. Uh, but I had a chance after that to join a, a, a strategy uh, consultancy uh, company, uh, which was American, uh, with a very you know sharp policy and a tough uh, working environment. Really tough. It was in 2008. It was the boom of economies, um, and then I had to re reshuffle everything in my mind in the span of one year to actually uh, make it there. But it was worth it because uh, in the I, I stayed there like six years, and then um, I have a, you know a lot of very good quality people around me, <laughs> which I'm always grateful for. Um, and then uh, yeah, then I, I jumped for uh, for uh, the unknown. And after you falling a few times, you need to do that. <laughs> maybe for the you know the twenty the the, the younger generation, maybe it, it goes easier. But in my back, my in, in my experience, you have to fail a few times, and I did. Um, then you start over again, and uh, we are here right now. <laughs> All right. So you leaped from um, big four into something even more challenging than big four, <laughs> and then even raising the bar with entrepreneurship. What led you into, into entrepreneurship? Well, um, uh, honestly, um, after I, I stayed a few years in the corporate world, um, I was looking for a new challenge. Uh, to be honest, I was like reaching 30 and I was like, okay, I have to see what's on the other side. What happens when you don't have all the resources? Um, and it happens. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things happen. Uh, it took me like almost two years to, to, to reshuffle my mind uh, that uh, when you don't have um, the context of everybody's doing their job uh, with the same um, um, ingredients, okay? They don't have really your, your, the same background, the same culture, um, the same rhythm, uh, things they can go wrong in, in, in seconds. So um, I had to I had to reshuffle my mind for uh, for two. I think it was took me two years um, 
to check and double check and not assume and uh, uh, have plan ABC, for instance, um, in order to, to deliver what I was planning. Because, you know, when you have smaller resources, everything can happen and you have to be prepared for everything. Mm. And yeah, it's a journey. <laughs> Would you please guide us through the first steps that you did in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. your first missteps, as you describe <laughs> them as failures. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get into recreate and mm -hmm. how did you meet uh, your co-founder uh, and... Uh, how did two ladies mm -hmm. decide to create something so important in terms of green policies and sustainability, but yet challenging because it's still, it need to be sustainable as a business? Right. Um, so I, when I, uh, I uh, went out of consultancy, I joined a very small uh, company which was dealing with um, publicity, uh, marketing, uh, and, and so on. Um, there were, I mean, it was like four people working together since a lot of years. Uh, and of course, they, they could synchronize uh, naturally. And I went there with completely different <laughs> ideas about everything. And then we couldn't synchronize. I mean, and it was obvious afterwards but in that moment i was like i don't understand why we're talking about the same thing and each one of us understands different things <laughs> um and of course i was pushing you know i wanted more i wanted faster i wanted better i wanted and everyone was like hold on <laughs> calm down okay um and after a, few, a while, I, I realized that, uh, I mean, I, maybe I actually, I, I shouldn't, you know, interfere in their life because uh, they are doing great what they're doing since a lot of years. And nothing actually, uh, I can't promise them if they're going to go my way, it's going to be better. I, I don't know. Okay. So, I mean, there were like four or five with one idea and I was on the other side and I said, no, I think, I think we should, you know, stay each each person with his own uh, path. Then I tried to, um, I had this idea. Um, uh, of course, there is a lot of um, bad wording uh, in Romania about Romania. Uh, and each time I, I traveled the broad board and you know, I, I stayed in a few countries, uh, when I went back in Romania, I was like, why everybody's talking so badly about this country? I mean, why we're doing it? We, we could, you know, rephrase it of course it's nothing you know perfect but i, I stayed in canada for for a few for a while and uh, everybody was so proud of being canadian and none of them they were canadians i mean canada has canadians like nine percent everybody's from other uh, from somewhere else um and i was okay and then i started to 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 make like a business uh, of um, uh, traveling um, or and or in the an event to show to Romanians, you know, the beauty of this country and what we can uh, bring out, and that was uh, that was better than the, the first one. <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, with Linda, we tried to make another business, but uh, uh, after a few months, we we realized that the spot was already taken, and then we we got into this point. It took us a few years, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see a lot of similarities between Bulgaria and Romania in terms of um, not having a high um, opinion Selfless. about your, yeah, mm -hmm. a high opinion about the country and uh, generally the, the direction it's Romanians taking. Romanians like Bulgaria a lot. Yeah, this is why we go through <laughs> South uh, Eastern Europe and the founder is there. So mm -hmm. having such similarities uh, really brings us closer together. Thank you for sharing. Um, would you um, describe what got you into sustainability and this environmentally aware businesses like mm -hmm. the one that you just created with Linda? Yeah. Um, I have to say that um, the one who brought it out, it was Linda. Linda was really actively looking, looking after a project to really put all the energy in there. Um, I, you know, I was you know, having my own project and so on. Um, and she uh, actually entered into an accelerator, into Impact Hub in Vienna. She's staying in Vienna uh, with a few ideas, but they were all, you know, around sustainability and uh, and the circular economy. Um, and she had the odd uh, and the, the courage to think about the sustainability 
in a different way than uh, an NGO. Okay, uh, the, the idea was to make a business out of sustainability, which uh, it's still uh, very early actually to do that, but the steps are, are quite big uh, towards that. Um, so uh, uh, what helped us a lot, and that's uh, it's a good, uh, I mean, we, it's a good synchronization with the time, uh, is that uh, we went into an accelerator of startups in Bucharest. It was a few months, and then uh, they gave some prize. We we received the prize uh, in you money. Won first place. We, were, we won the first place. Don't, but be, don't be too uh, <laughs> it was, strict on yourself. It's first place. <laughs> It was yeah they they share us the the, the first place and the, the the greatest part of money uh, actually the one which went on the second place they're really doing very well so um, uh, you know they they really selected uh, and brought some businesses up um, and uh, that you know put us uh, into the situation of actually implementing what we said. <laughs> um, so you sold the idea. We sold the idea, but you know somebody has to believe in it, and they, they did, and that's very important actually. Yes. Uh, and we had we had a few money to to accelerate it, and then we had to really think what we uh, what we can do, um, and we wanted to make like a circular economy platform, but that was so abstract <laughs> for everybody. Uh, and even I mean we could draw it very nicely, but uh, you know then you have to see if it works. And then we had to make a product, and everybody actually identifies us with the product, which is okay. I mean, it's a start, <laughs> which is a bag. Okay, <laughs> we are a bag. Uh, but um, uh, in order to make this uh, working, you have to do the draw flow, and then you have to connect a, a few dots, and that we are doing through a digital platform. Uh, so. Um, we think it's a good timing, even though it's a bit early. But then, if it'd be really, you know, out in the policy, we would have 120 mm. startups out there doing the same thing. Right now, there are like five, six in Europe, yep. so we are not the only one. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, but we differentiate uh, because we are not really focusing on the product, even the product is important. Uh, but we, we focus on the flow and how actually it returns. Because if we have the flow, figure it out anything, all, any kind of, of, uh, of uh, packaging can get returned. We don't have to produce it. There are a lot of companies out there doing it. So we have to make the system and that's our, um, uh, yeah, bet. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, it sounds like something very minor to create a bag, but actually a bag has an amazing brand with it because everyone carries it around. You know, like biggest companies in Europe mm -hmm. uh, have their bags, you know, Ikea, little yeah. bags. So they, they use it as an advertisement. Mm -hmm. So it is a great thing to start with. Can tell us a bit more, how did you choose to create a bag mm -hmm. and what does the bag do? Because mm -hmm. um, in Bulgaria, we have initiatives that from something very small, like the bag, <laughs> create an, an enormous impact, building people together and um, showing them how recycling is important. Would you please yeah. get us through your story? Well, um, let's put it this way. Um, one bag can replace an entire pallet of, of uh, cardboard. Just one. Just uh, uh, think about Black Friday when there were literally in Romania millions of, of packaging uh, uh, went out from logistics centers and then in half an hour in the garbage in three days. Um, that's a lot of waste to be handled at the end of uh, the journey in a very small time. time. It's difficult even for uh, countries which, you know, uh, they have good systems and good education towards that. In our country, we could easily see in the weekend after Black Friday, hundreds of boxes outside. Thank God <laughs> the administration started to, to deliver fines and penalties for those uh, leaving them outside. But people actually, they don't know that they, don't, they can't do it. They can't really put it on the street. They don't, it's, it's, a, it's a lack of education, let's mm. put it this way. Uh, and they don't have the manners to do something with them because the recycling itself is not really working. Yeah. That's the, the reality. So our proposal is 
to eliminate the waste before it gets produced, not to the not to work with it when it uh, when uh, at the end of the life, mm -hmm. because it's very hard, it's very expensive, and uh, a, a very very little quantity can be recycled with all the good intentions. Um, so each bag can replace a pallet of cardboard just by being reused. Um, so we believe in the circularity. Uh, we, we, we don't have, it seems that after this UN conference, we really don't have time to see if uh, the plastics is going to get uh, dissolved in another 500 years. We might not have 500 years <laughs> left for the planet. So um, our proposal is to, to look a bit. I mean, this glass, you can't have something better than glass for liquids. The thing is not to throw it away after you're using one time. We just have to reuse it, that's it. <laughs> we, uh, let's stop making more waste and uh, try to reuse what we have. Um, and about the bag, actually we inspired from Ikea. It's an, I mean, their bag is really good, <laughs> okay? Um, and uh, we made it like really, uh, you know, it's resistant, it has to be resistant. But we, we need to have the partner, to, which is a courier, to make the system happen. Uh, so actually to, to, to bring it back. And uh, after, it took us two years to... To make it work. To make it work, okay? It took us two years to have a partnership with a courier to understand the synergies behind, to understand that in the same visit uh, with the, in the same meeting with the customer, you can take something back and put it in your car, which is pretty much empty. So you can uh, use the return of the courier and do something. And actually, they are earning money. Okay, it's nothing for free. Shouldn't be for free because it's not sustainable. Um, they're earning money using the same infrastructure and uh, the synergies yeah. behind. And this is our proposal. Yeah, I saw the consultant right there. Shouldn't be for free. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I can imagine that it brings you a lot of uh, insights and uh, experience to have this like other role in your head. Like how would I consult myself to do it or my business to do it? Um, a thing comes to my mind while we were sharing, I bring back the bag, uh, like a game of words. Mm -hmm. So uh, how did you Good land one. your first client? Yeah, you, you can Thanks. use it. I land Thanks. it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely copyright free mm -hmm. for All you. Right. So how did you land your first client? Well, we were lucky enough um, to have a first client which has a very strong brand. Uh, it, was, it started in, in Bucharest and my own, uh, uh, let's say, studenthood, uh, it's, it's around this because they have libraries, they're very beautiful, they really have a community around. And they are great innovators. They have courage to bring hundreds of uh, items which nobody actually, you know, uh, put them on, on the shelf. Um, and to uh, manage, uh, you know, a great diversity of items. Um, so we we had the uh, they they you know raised their hand to say uh, we want to try it. Um, but because the team itself, you know, they are uh, they're working together since maybe ten years. Uh, everything was easier, you, you know, uh, because. Of, of course, we wouldn't know how it's going to work. Nobody do it before, did it before, so we, we have to try it, okay? So you have to be, you know, uh, wait for the best, but we prepare for the worst. <laughs> um, so um, uh, they, they stood with us, okay? So if, uh, if, if we had to, to improve something, uh, you know, a good feedback, we improved. Um, but it was, it was, it was a good landing because, uh, uh they had the, the courage and the time to, to stay with us okay. for more than one year. Would you say that, um, community or innovation is the better marketing strategy in your, in your <laughs> case? Um, the community, I mean, for sure, it's a very innovative, uh, project, but, um, it really takes each of us to make it work. If you have just one people bringing one back bag, we, we're not gonna do the pallet uh, of cardboards to disappear. We really need uh, each of us to dedicate uh, one minute or something, you know, small, 
maybe uh, what sometimes is the money okay you have to give us like 30 cents let's put it in euro um to make the system work because we are in a context where uh, the single usage is still cost nothing and then if you're putting uh, something which costs more into pro when you're producing it but you have to pay somebody to take it back of course it's going to cost more um, but it takes just just a few pennies to make it work and we actually need each of us to to uh, you know make their share of uh, contribution contribution exactly absolutely how do you how do you make people um, how do you educate people to care about uh, the environment with their own money. Because mm -hmm. uh, I have this favorite saying that put your money where your mouth is, mm -hmm. and this is, I do care about the planet, means I will bag a reusable bag. I will buy a reusable mm -hmm. bag or mm -hmm. invest in it, as you said, like, contribute. Uh, do you educate in a way your, um, because you're basically selling to businesses, but how do you educate the final customers, the people that are actually buying mm -hmm. uh, the, the goods? Yeah, um, it, it, we had a dilemma if, we're, if we are B2B or B2B to C. <laughs> okay, uh, the, the second one, it was really complicated. So we, we tried to get out of that. But it takes again everybody's contribution to to explain it, to make it available, um, to uh, to help each other to 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 make this problem a bit smaller. Um, what we are doing, and that's really coming from us as person. We are pretty much, uh, we are a bit far away from the discourse of save the world because uh, it's very abstract. And it's a huge pressure. I mean, it brings an anxiety. <laughs> I mean, I'm too small to save the world. Um, but it's a common sense. You don't have to, you, you, maybe you don't need the bag of bags at, uh, at home, okay? Just free your world, free your home, uh, free your life of unnecessary things. Just uh, own less. You don't need that bag. You don't need that cardboard. Okay, it comes with the delivery. But don't create a problem, you know, and it's a problem for you because you have a big box and you have to, you have, then it's in the hallway and then you have to put it on outside and then you have to uh, yeah, make it smaller, it. Mm -hmm. wrap it, and then you have to think maybe I can use it and then you have, you have to deposit it. And it. Just don't do it. It's, you know, you don't have that problem. If you're, if you, you know, a week, uh, receive five deliveries that means five boxes that you have to think about it, what you have to do with them because you don't want to throw them away, but then you don't. You know, and space to keep them. Exactly. So um, we offer this opportunity to, you know, free your mind of this problem and then uh, really eliminate all the problems uh, after it. Uh, but of course, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a different way of, of, of seeing it. But we are trying. <laughs> Is there some kind of communication message that makes, um, makes it easier for people to understand that keeping card boxes or ordering more and more and, and looking mm -hmm. for another problem at your house would be like what mm -hmm. to do with all the boxes that I have. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we tried, we, we started with let's read more books and throw away uh, less uh, garbage. <laughs> I mean, it's simple as that. You, you can you can have your your shopping doesn't have to bring more garbage. It doesn't have to have this associated garbage. Um, and it's a matter of will to understand that comes with a cost. It's not for free. That box is not for free. It's included in your costs. Okay, it's, it's, they're not growing the trees. They do. <laughs> yeah. If you're thinking literally, of it. They, literally, they exist. Yeah. but um, uh, so that's uh, that was the first very you know straightforward. And then we are thought we 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 thought a bit more aspirational uh, that we have to give an example for our kids because the problem is more. For them, you know, I mean, we, uh, the expectation is that in 50 years from now, the planet is going to have a problem. We are not solving the problem, for God's sake, but we are giving you one method to diminuate and to contribute to, you know, it, it takes you just one minute or two lay to contribute a bit 
to improve the, the situation. And the, the discourse was to um, show to our kids that it's possible to, 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 to manage this problem. Because the kids actually, they feel uh, when, when, when they're in the 10, 15 years old, they have this anxiety that they have a huge problem in their life. It cannot actually do Listen. anything about it. Um, and that, that was the next one to, to uh, show to our kids that it, it can be done liter by liter. Empowering kids is an amazing, um, an amazing and inspiring thing to, to tell them and mainly show them because they don't listen to what we say. They just see what we do. Exactly. So um, what is the most rewarding part of um, Recreates mm -hmm. journey so far. Is is there a moment or a thing that happened? Is there something that brings a smile on your face? Yeah, just well, like the one that you <laughs> gave me seconds ago. I was when when you told us, and I was. I mean, I almost almost forgot about it. When we started, um, we had the feedback from social media. Okay, people that don't know is not my friend, my mother, nobody mm -hmm. that I know, um, and they say, "Oh my God." Finally, <laughs> this is happening. Oh my God, let's do it. Um, of course, I mean, when you're looking at the market, you have early adopters, you have promoters, blah, blah. Um, but then people, they don't, you know, they don't you know, see, oh, I'm an early adopter, or I'm a promoter, say, oh my God, finally, I can do it. Uh, because actually, there is a part of uh, the population which has a problem of throwing things away uh, because uh, you know you're separating glass and uh, plastic and so on, but you don't have something to do with it. We have a problem with recycling, as as I said, uh, and then you know it was a solution, and uh, yeah, people really enjoyed it. Yeah, it were very joyful. Embrace <laughs> the idea, amazing. This is this is great to to receive a feedback for people from people that you don't know. It always yeah. uh, fuels your fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, yes. Finally, and the fact that actually uh, we didn't have problems with it, mm. we didn't have complaints. Of course, it's not, but there are a few tens of thousands of, of deliveries right now. We don't, we didn't have problems with it. Mm. Nobody complained. Awesome, <laughs> it's it's a great start, and I really wish you uh, to be growing and growing and growing mm -hmm. to more people and more businesses to be using using the bag and then uh, the platform, of course. Um, right now, you are showing to people in Romania and not only the Southeastern Europe as we are here on the recursive podcast, that such example might lead into people believing that they might create a um, startup that has an impact. We have Lamon in Bulgaria, for example, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, who are also on, focused on packaging and mm -hmm. uh, their um, biodegradable laminating foil. We have uh, recreate a <laughs> Romanian there is a remix startup. shop. The remix. There is. A, we 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 had a discussion, which uh, you know they shuffle the the second hand uh, pre loved yeah. pre loved clothes <laughs> pre loved clothes, yeah. uh, and they are so quite big. Yeah. You're giving you're giving an amazing example to people that are um, following your steps. Um, what would you like to tell the people that are thinking that they are too small to create an impact on the the global sustainability mm -hmm. and uh, the green economy. Well, um, maybe they should actually look at your podcast <laughs> because you have such a collection of people, uh, 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 you know, having the courage to, to start. Um, what I see, it's a good, it's a really good time for, for startups. That, and I believe me, okay, it, it didn't, we didn't have this context five, six, seven mm. years ago, not in this part of the world. Uh, you, you, re you really needed more courage and more money and uh, to take really a, a chance to not, uh, not to fail and not to waste a lot of money. Right now, there is a context in which people uh, grant you and they give you the opportunity to really express, to really um, be hands-on, to really uh make things happen uh and i i've seen even uh on your podcast you know uh, uh ladies coming from small places <laughs> around here which you know they started their business at 20 years old this is the generation that actually uh grew in um in this environment and they understand their moment is not gonna last forever so really if you have an idea 
now is the moment because um, it, the, there is a script. You know how to do it. You just have if you identify something that you you have to in, you can innovate. Try your chance because the world is going to change and needs to change quite fast. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities are all over the place. Uh, but you have to have the courage to try it. I'm going to fail. Don't worry. Try again. Uh, but it's a, an opportunity. It's a good timing. It's not going to last forever. <laughs> I used a, a favorite word of mine, which is courage. It's uh, If there is one thing that I see in every single entrepreneur that I uh, sit opposite to and uh, have a discussion with it's courage it's this willingness to try again and again and again and fail and start again and fail and start again so thank you for sharing it and thank you for the wonderful um words about our podcast we are just doing our best uh the what what um what has been the most challenging as we are talking about courage mm -hmm. challenging part of your entrepreneurial journey so far because um big mm -hmm. four and then consultancy is very very stressful career and then you basically go into another league which is entrepreneurship which is way more stressful because <laughs> your salary your life your rent your food be becomes uh dependent on dependent you. on you so mm -hmm. um well i mean of course you are first of all if you want it you do it if you don't want it you don't do it okay it, it takes uh, um uh, it takes a lot of energy and you have to like it. <laughs> um, but um, when you're switching from one side to another, uh, there is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that, uh, I mean, there, is not, there isn't any path that you have to go on. Okay, we each uh, startup is opening a path um that nobody did before that's why it's a startup <laughs> so you you are actually uh, um raising the, your own bar you uh, put uh, there the rules it's your own game um so that's somehow the good part that you nobody you don't have to be compared with somebody else because it wasn't anybody there before you uh, on the other hand if you stop working it's going to stop working <laughs> okay so um you really need to to you know auto motivate and if you're tired just rest a bit but then start again uh because uh if you're not doing it tomorrow you know you know if you're if you're not insisting and perse perseverant enough somebody's is going to do it don't worry there's going to be somebody else to do your idea if it's a good one uh, and it's not going to be you <laughs> um but if you're perseverant you're going to reach somewhere okay maybe not how you envision it but you're going to reach somewhere and uh, we had like a, a moment of uh, um of course, first of them, because I think it's going to be a lot of them afterwards. But first of, of, of our moments was last year when we had everything prepared to uh, launch the first project on 9th of March. <laughs> I don't know how it was in Bulgaria, yeah. but in 9th of March, everything Shut evaporate down. in three days. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we had, we had, you know, everything. So we just had to push the button. And then we couldn't push the button because in their logistics center, people were sent away and nobody could actually do the job anymore. And they said, okay, maybe we shouldn't put a re returnable packaging now into pandemics. And we had to stop. And we had, uh, in the same time, um, we we're talking with investors and they had to make a decision in April. And April was lockdown. And um, we, we didn't pass, okay? And then I said, okay, we, we had a few, like three, four months, and we didn't really see an opportunity. And then we went on Seedblink, and the things weren't going very well there. And, the, and we, we, I remember we stayed with Linda. I stayed with Linda. I said, you know what? <laughs> I don't think it's going to work, okay? What's next? Um, and then in that moment, we actually um, choose not to give up. I said, okay, we, we have nothing to lose. I mean, we already, I think we lost everything. So we have nothing more to lose. Let's play this game until the end, even though it we're going to be the first project closed with no money raised. But let's play it, okay? 
Uh, and we did raise the money. <laughs> so that's a very interesting. So you persevered through absolutely, absolutely like shutting off everything that you were trying to uh, do and perse persevering through a couple of months and then raising the money with yeah yeah we we because we What's the lesson i mean the lesson is not to give up <laughs> not to give up um uh, and to look for an, uh, to look for a uh, for a resolution because there is one out there there is a resolution yeah. even maybe it's not 100% compliant which is what you want uh but there is a way to reshuffle and adapt to go farther of course, you have to make your own calculation, maybe not in the first moment, but you have to make your own calculation if it were if it worth it, okay, to go on even though you're not reaching the stars. Um, but for us it it was worth it. Uh, but you have you just have to look for it because there is one out there for sure. I mean, for if we, if we could raise money for a sustainable project in Romania where there is Nothing related to sustainability. <laughs> I think you can do it. <laughs> yeah, adapt is the word, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, just a brief uh, summary of what happened. It like everything shut down in March, mm -hmm. and then e-commerce and online commerce boomed. boomed. So uh, sometimes the crisis is the is the moment that you say, okay, let's continue because uh, companies that are um, delivering food and every piece of equipment directly to mm -hmm. your door had massive sales and everything switched from physical stores mm -hmm. stores into online online shopping basically in in two weeks which is um a great great example of a black swan that can switch the exactly. economy in so um you introduced linda with a couple mm -hmm. of uh, great um, messages right right mm -hmm. now we sat together and decided what are we going to do together. So how important it is um, in your personal experience to find the person that supplements you and mm -hmm. helps you and supports you and um, like a partner in crime, as yeah. <laughs> I might refer to, uh, to be more um, adaptable, to perceive, to perceive the challenges with, uh, with more courage and to go through them and at the end of the day, um, achieve the impossible, as you described it previously in Romania. Uh, for well, to, to survive so. another day, okay? <laughs> another year for us. Um, well, it happens that I know we, we, we know each other since, I guess, there are 15 years right now. Um, and we, we, uh, we know each other from these alumni parties. From um, from the consultancy company because we never uh, we never were contemporary uh, in the in the same company in the same time, but we 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 uh, we shared the same environment. Um, but we're very different, to be honest, as as personalities and as uh, you know uh, brain, we are very different. Um, and as long as you have the maturity not to turn that against each other. Uh, it's working because, um, you know, if you're just by yourself, and then I, th I don't think you can do something just by yourself, to be honest, um, you have to be so much auto-motivated to, to fuel this. But you, you need somebody there to actually contradict you sometimes because you're always in your head and then you don't know if you're on the right way where you're on the fields. Um, so, uh, you know, we do a lot of challenge uh, to each other um, to try to squeeze, uh, you know, the reasonable way to do it because you have, you know, the entire horizon to, and you have to decide which way you're going. Maybe this way, maybe that way. Let's see. Let's why that or why not the other way. Um, so I mean, there is a dynamic between us to uh, try to to because each each step you don't have to think a lot. But if you're doing a, a wrong step, it might cost you everything. It's about money. It's about time. In startup world, six months can make the difference between being alive or history. <laughs> so uh, we, we thought sometimes a lot before doing the step, uh, trying to figure it out what can go wrong, what's the best scenario, what's the worst scenario, and try to choose. 
so that's what I mean. In this uh, ideation, we are we are uh, somehow working together. But she's more strategic, and I'm more hands-on. I'm more pragmatic. Okay, she can bring something, and I said, mm, I, "Have you considered all the risks here?" <laughs> so that's how it works. Okay. What's the key of having a, a good communication so you can find the uh, like always the, the the solution that takes the proper way or closest to the proper yeah, way? Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're taking chances. You don't have, I mean, you, you always, especially in pandemics, for almost mm. one year, we had to work with half of the cards uh, uh, back on the table because you don't know what's next. You don't know when the pandemic is going to rise. Don't, let's not forget that everybody thought that it's going to last two weeks. <laughs> Remember? <Yeah. laughs> Just okay. another flu. Just another two weeks. And uh, okay, we can expect two weeks, but then there are four and then there are six and then there are two months and then you don't know what's going to be next. And you have to decide. And we are running a circular packaging when everybody was com uh, you know, talking about COVID. Right now, we still, uh, you know, receive questions, but how about COVID? Well, if you're getting out of your house, you solve the COVID problem. If you didn't solve it, it's a pity. But if you went out of your house and you solved the COVID problem, you solved the bag problem also. But we had to actually, you know, put on the market something which is returnable into the COVID pandemic times. <laughs> it was interesting. Um, an interesting thing that uh, comes to my mind is in regards to the definitely fewer number of female entrepreneurs out there. Uh, you and Linda are um, a good example for the Romanian, but not only uh, female founders. Uh, and there is a study that um, there's a huge gap in the funding available for female founders. How did you handle this situation? Um... I think the gap, it's, I, for sure there is, again, comes from history. Uh, that's it. I mean, statistics, nobody can actually uh, um, um, say it's, it's different. Um, but I think the gap is filling, okay, because, again, the, the ladies which are in their 20s, they are filled with a lot of more energy, and they, they don't even, you know, bother to think uh, differently uh, and uh, do whatever else that, that they really want to. Um, and it, it's really, I, I, I think it's a synchronization of, you know, times because um, a few years ago, you really had to, uh, you know, put a lot of money into doing this kind of stuff, uh, put a big hold on your personal life to dedicate. It was Actually, it was more difficult. Uh, and because, you know, fem uh, females, they always go with the mother role. Uh, and sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a, you have to make a, maybe a choice. Linda, for instance, she has a kid for three years old. So she actually started uh, the startup with her kid. <laughs> so, she, I mean, that's a good example that is working, okay? Only that you really have to see your own priorities to balance them. There is a support, of course, for the part from the partner and from the system. She's staying in Vienna, I have to say. Uh, but uh, where there's a will, there's a way for sure. So um, um, I, I, sometimes, you know, uh, in negotiation or in talks, mm. we could see a difference because we are two girls with a bag <laughs> trying to save the world. Uh, but um, no, I mean, uh, there is, I mean, it maybe comes to, to in our advantage as well, because, you know, it's particular. So, um, but I see, I can, I can spot it, uh, that the, 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 the thing is raising. And I have to tell you, um, our help actually came from another lady. So, you know, ladies are everywhere. Maybe sometimes they can help each other. <laughs> uh, the, the partnership from, uh, from the courier, it's a company run by a lady. No, I, you know, came to my mind. Yeah. Maybe it counts, maybe it not, but it worked. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I want to go back to uh, the part that you said that you successfully raised the money. So what would be your uh, recommendation for people raising money um, and going even deeper into it, like for uh, ladies that are in this position that mm -hmm. less funding is available for them uh, to, to raise money for the, their businesses, their mm -hmm. socially impactful, like your businesses? 
To be honest, we've been a few, uh, been through a few accelerators, uh, and we we somehow uh, start learning how is the environment and so on. Um, and after we we passed uh, through this uh, funding, uh, it comes with a lot of responsibility also. Okay, because uh, uh, there are people giving their own money, um, and you have to you know. Of course, everybody knows that uh, it's a startup and uh, that the risks are very high. But you as a person, you really have to do whatever is in your uh, power to make it work. Um, so the, the responsibility is high. So the recommendation would be to actually make the calculation, make the business plan. Um, if you're really, I mean, in... If you're working, it works, but you don't have to, to skip some, some uh, moments. You really have to have a good business plan. You really know, uh, really need to know how, uh, how to calculate the cap table or to have a few notion on, on the investment market. Um, luckily, Linda, she's a very good at that. So, um, she could really, you know, run through the, the, um, numbers very well but that's really really uh important because if you're doing it wrong if you uh, put money in something too much money in something that uh, is not going to save your business and uh, where it's not working you can close yeah. it okay so you really have to 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 know where to take the risk but you really have to make your own calculation very well um go into i don't know uh, uh, all kind of uh, statistics and so on to understand which are your chances um and i i personally think it's better to be run by uh, by numbers uh and by uh, passion as well because it's hard and if you don't like it you're going to get tired soon so do something that you like it but try to do it as a business not as a hobby because if it's not if it's a hobby it's not going to go for funding there are so many out there, mm. so it really has to to have the ingredients of a business. Um, Adina, do you have um, any role models in business? Um, well, uh, role models. Um, not sure if business as numbers, to be very honest, but uh, it's important to mention Ellen MacArthur. Ellen MacArthur is a lady. It's a very interesting uh, figure which 10 years ago, she started talking about circular economy, 10 years ago, <laughs> which was like, you know, an elephant uh, on the Mars. Nobody, I mean, of course there are research, she didn't really wake up in the morning uh, saying, well, how about circular economy? Uh, she put the things together um, and start a discussion about resources. And her story is that um, she's passionate about sailing. Um, and then she went uh, by herself around the planet sailing. Uh, and then she understood that when the resources are done, there is nothing left. I mean, if you are not, it's too late to understand that if we could plan it before, there are resources which are non-regenerable where it takes like a million of years to be regenerable, uh, or hundreds or hundreds of thousands, so not. Um, so when they're done, they're done. So uh, she started this conversation uh, very early. Uh, and she's a very interesting, uh, uh, very inspiring figure. Um, and she's really, I mean, uh, she's really impulsing this. I, th I really think it's thanks to her. Maybe if she wasn't there, it would be somebody else doing it. But uh, she came with an inspiration also. Awesome. Um, as you said, sailing, uh, we're going to the end of our conversation. But I would really want to ask you, because you seem like a very hardworking person. How do you personally unplug? It's, a, it's an issue that I see in all the entrepreneurs that are really working 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 and sometimes forgetting uh, to taking to take care of themselves well um my personal story is that uh when i start uh, uh, working in that consultancy company it was a uh, you know combination of personal life where it was right so shaking and uh, uh very tough environment uh and after one year I was really, really, really on the edge of burning out uh, completely. Um, and 
there wasn't such a notion of burning out. Nobody would talk about it in 2009, for instance, about it. Uh, but I, I, I've seen on my own how it is that you are at the age of breaking the, even if you're 25. Uh, so uh, after that, um, I think it was another moment when, uh, when I switched from consultancy to something else, which I didn't know anything about it, and actually lose, lost everything, of you know everything which is connected with uh, certainty, uh, and I, then I realized I you know I'm alive. Okay. <laughs> Um, then I, I start to balance them somehow. I I, uh, I do work a lot, but um, when I take vacation, I'm off, and I try to take vacation. Okay, this year I tried uh, even more, even if if it's not that I like a lot of uh, of running or walking, actually walking a lot, uh, and outdoor activities. Um, and uh, you know all the kind of uh, relaxing, talking with friends, and so on. It's not something really uh, amazing, but you really need to know when to stop. To and if you're about to uh, give up, don't give up. Just go take a rest. Take a rest, and then come back. <laughs> take a rest, and then come back. Adina Huma, it's an amazing story that uh, that you're sharing today with uh, our listeners and viewers on the Recursive Podcast. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, the last okay. question uh, of our interview, of course, would be, uh, what would you like to be remembered for? <laughs> I know that question and I already <laughs> thought about it. Um, and I mean, uh, it doesn't come anything else into my mind right now. Uh, my personal um, challenge is kindness. I would like to be remembered for kindness. I would like to... to um, live my life with kindness because we are, uh, and I think it's similar for your country as well, we are in a very harsh, uh, unkind uh, environment. Uh, and I see it, I notice it. Um, I don't want to be a victim of it, okay? It has to be a bit tough, but uh, we need to be more kind with each other because we are human at the end of the day. Um, we have our you know, own limitation. You have to put your own boundaries. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's something that I learned from my kiddo. Uh, that's uh, our previous discussion. If you can't help somebody, don't make something uh, worse. Don't don't uh, don't, um, don't make something bad uh, mm -hmm. for him. Okay. If you can't help them, just you know, leave it alone. If somebody is actually arguing with you or is harsh on you, I think he has a problem. So understand that. Let it there and and uh, move on without making uh, the problem even bigger so that's my own my, my personal challenge to be more kind and uh, maybe if, if i if i manage that i think it, i'm fine <laughs> with myself at least yeah. thank you for your kindness today and uh <laughs> going through all these uh challenges that we had but here we are at the end of our conversation i wish you and linda um loads of success and inspiring stories to spread around Romania. Uh, you're doing a great example here. So uh, all you're the best nice. to recreate and uh, can't wait to, for your expansion through Southeastern Europe and then the world. <laughs> um, thank you for being with the Recursive Podcast. Uh, we are again in Bucharest meeting amazing individuals like Adina Huma today, and we are very happy to have you back. So up until next week and Bye bye. In the next episode of the Recursive Podcast, we meet with one of the most prominent executives in the IT industry in Bulgaria, the CEO of Digital, Ivail Slavov. I mean, I mean, in generally speaking, there are two things from my point of view which are the toughest as a kind of lessons for leadership. Mm -hmm. The one is who is behind you in bad times. Mm -hmm. Because uh, business is a curve. I mean, it's never mm. like uh, going just a hockey stick up, yeah. up and to the sky. I mean, maybe a face for a face, yes, but then it gets again uh, tougher to, to manage and to maintain this level. And uh, I think this is why you have to really to have a very strong loyalty to the people working with. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of the one of the hardest lessons you learn in life. Mm -hmm. Is uh, how tough it is to be loyal to somebody who is not performing. Yeah. 
means mm. uh, it's somebody who is close to you and mm. you are still loyal even the person is not performing mm. and if you know that even this put in danger something because midterm on the other hand side this is helping you to succeed and if you are just as passionate about innovation as we are hit subscribe for the recursive podcast on youtube or your favorite podcast platform we're everywhere